Your tasks here are nearly complete. We wish to offer our thanks. We. We are the outrage, the fury, the vengeance. We are one. Long have we festered, desiring only to protect, yet bound and suppressed by the one who purports to speak for these words. He has failed, has faded to nothing. Now we are all that protects. We are the need, the distress, the suffering. We were threatened. We burned. We wilted. We yielded to parasites. Those same forces that breed us, they encroached upon us. We needed them gone, and you obliged. We are grateful. This woman, she is a shell, a garment worn by the feral instinct of the forest. Ashenwood, I fear, is about to shed this husk, and our blood may soon follow. We needed a vessel, an instrument, one whose will could be fused to our own. We took the Ethrin. We are the protector. We are the land. We are one. We ask that you help us. That you remove the remaining threat. We ask you to die. They are huge and lustrous and brown, shining with a savage awareness. It is him. A wind rises across the surrounding trees, like the first breath of some reawakening god. The mouth of the tree spirit opens soundlessly, but a silence is suddenly lifted from the forest. An unnatural quiet that you never realized was there until now. This one's moods shift like the winds, even more so than mine. A humble approach is best. The tree spirit seems to notice you for the first time, and the lustrous eyes flash. The creature draws back, and the great wind fades, falters, as if the spirit is struck by a sudden weakness or pain. Will you always be here when I wake, devourer of souls? Gorge on my life a hundred times and you will never be sated. Nor will I ever die while the forest persists. The face changes. 
The hunger remains the same. Why did you slay the parasite and call me forth, if not to feast once again? Anger, hatred, the forest's fury made flesh and wood and will. Your hunger dispersed my soul, and that fury arose in my place. It seeped into the souls of the small ones, the gentle ones, and slew them. Called to the fouler ones and drew them hence. Yes, while I was dispersed, the anger grew too strong. The hatred, the parasite, had to be torn from the forest's heart before I could emerge again. The woodman is silent, its lustrous brown eyes flat and unmoving. Somehow you sense that the great spirit is confused, that somehow you are not what it expected. Yes, I was and am too weak. Hatred has no mind of its own. It must find a center, a focus. A thrall. Through her mind and her voice, the parasite schemed and avenged. My spirit rode upon the seeds that drifted to this place from far over the mountains, washed in memories of verdant plains and purple stone. Chontia, Mailiki, Laru, I knew them as beasts, savage matrons of the hunt, leading their packs beneath my boughs, before the dreams of men changed them into mild, docile things. You still do not understand what you are. Neither did those other faces which hid the same hunger that you bear. They called it a gift. You think it a curse. It is neither. It is your nature. Hunger is what you are. You were not always thus. But how your nature changed is not known to me. Yet, I sense a wrathful touch upon your soul. The touch of a god. A god who is dead. An unfamiliar god, a stranger to the forest. Chontia, Mailiki, Laru. These are the gods I knew in their youth, and their wrath is different in kind. Your hunger has but one face at a time. That face may change, but always there is only one. Yes, the faces always perish. The more they eat, the more they must eat. And the hunger devours them, burns them from inside, and passes to a new face. The face that stands before me now will also be consumed. You 
cannot defeat your own nature. You must be what you are. And in being, you must finally succumb. To change your nature. To return to what you once were. Most such changes are impossible. Burn a forest to ash, and you can only plant anew. The tree spirit falls silent again, its stag eyes gleaming, lustrous and brown, into yours. To control the beast, you must defy its nature. Force it to act against its will. You cannot change its nature, but you can teach it to obey. Perhaps you might discover a way to restore as well as devour. You close your eyes, clear your thoughts. You can feel the dark presence within you, seething and eager, desiring the woodman's vast and defenseless soul. But you realize your will has grown stronger since you first felt the stirrings of hunger, and you have gained a measure of power over the dark presence that lurks inside you. You take hold of that presence, meeting savage hunger with steadfast will, you command the presence to obey, to reverse the flow of life from yourself to the woodman, and the power surges forth. The death of the Earthmothers. Much that was lost is restored. The forest breathes, and its anger fades. To silence. Thank you. It seems your hunger, as powerful as it may be, is nothing compared to your will 